there's a revealing comment by one of the authors of The Neglected Son, Fritz Varenhold, who says, During my time as an environmental senator, as a manager for Shell for Renewable Energies, as chairman of Repower Systems, and as RWE Enology CEO, I demonstrated the exceptional features of the warming since the middle of the 20th century in hundreds of presentations, speeches, and conferences. I used Michael Mann's hockey stick, even though I should have known that relatively warm 11th century Greenland was not called green for no reason, and that the little ice age depicted in Peter Bruegel's paintings were familiar. In the meantime, a series of studies has been published that show the medieval warm period around the year AD 1000 had a similar temperature level to today's, and that the little ice age of the 16th century was about one degree centigrade cooler than today. You see, he knew and yet he didn't. But as soon as you open your eyes, there's evidence everywhere. The medieval warm period, MWP, four centuries of warmer air and sea surface temperatures between 900 and 1300 that reduced dangerous pack ice in the North Atlantic, opened up new vistas to the intrepid Norse, Iceland, then Greenland, then finally North America. Thus does climate make history. Following the MWP was the Little Ice Age, LIA, a period of cooling temperatures that ended in the mid-19th century. In New York in 1780, people could walk from Manhattan to Staten Island over the frozen harbor. In Europe, where the phenomenon was most clearly documented, the Thames and Hollands rivers and canals froze over, permitting skating parties. Glaciers advanced in the Swiss Alps, engulfing farms and crushing villages. The wintry London that Scrooge passes through in Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol is replete with snow not often seen in London today. The Little Ice Age was also contemporaneous with a certain fashion trend with important consequences for Canadian history, the beaver hat. And I would also here like to quote Jared Diamond from his blockbuster Guns, Germs, and Steel. And Diamond is no conservative. But he wrote, without apparent self-consciousness, and I quote, No historian, and probably not even a modern climatologist, could have predicted the Little Ice Age. And the Little Ice Age is important too, again, to give context to what's happening now. It was warm in the Middle Ages, and then it got unusually cold. And then the temperature rebounded. The Economist pointed out in 1991 that the Thames, for example, froze over eight times in the 17th century, six times in the 18th, and four times in the 19th, so far this century, it has not frozen once. This is a long trend. And let me again emphasize, possibly even harp on, the fact that all of this is hidden in plain sight to the point that people who are telling you that man is causing climate change will hand you evidence that the reverse is true. But I went on a freedom cruise in 2013 up the west coast of North America to Alaska's stunning Glacier Bay National Park. It was magnificent. I couldn't stop taking pictures out the window of my ship bedroom. When we got to Glacier Bay, they gave us a brochure, you know, come see Glacier Bay, all the great things, the breathtaking scenery, the animals, the vibrant Aboriginal culture, and the glaciers. And this brochure included a map, cheerfully showing the glaciers surging forth in the Little Ice Age, extending out into the Pacific by 1750, and then retreating sharply by, hey, 1880, before global warming? What's the deal here? Now, in the fine print, the brochure admits that some glaciers are advancing, before assuring us that in the contiguous United States, glaciers may soon be a thing of the past. And this is by no means the only such cycle during the Holocene. We know that the Roman warm period was at least as warm as today, probably warmer. The Romans were growing grapes in parts of Scotland in the first century AD. We do know that at one point, North Africa was forests and pasture lands, wet and appealing with hippopotamuses and giraffes. And around 5,000 years ago, rather suddenly, it desertified. But notice that this is not because of a period of warming. This is when the Holocene climate optimum is coming to an end. We're pretty sure that there was a Minoan warm period, that around 2000 BC, people could farm in more parts of the British Isles than they can today. And that particular fact comes from a book by Ching Jerembek and Prakash called A Global History of Architecture. When people aren't engaged in climate change polemics, they never think of denying that climate is unstable and that it has been warmer within recorded history than it is today.